tuning in. All right. And I'd like to call the uh, the plan commission meeting to order for Monday, August 12th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Uh, roll call, please. Johnny? Here. Johnny? Here. Jason? Here. Present. Turn that off. I don't think I can turn up him individually. Okay. Travis. Travis. Okay. Oh. Here's Joel. Started. Here. Started. <laughs> Here. Here. All right. Uh, public comment. Is there anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a public comment? Second time. Anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment? Third time, any public comments? I will note that there was um, a written communication received from Trustee Pinsonal about well, signage that got sent out to the commission as a whole. I don't know if anybody saw that in their email. And then I also have another written communication that was received from him that will be read in under agenda item seven um, for the, later on tonight. Uh, minutes from previous meetings, number three, minutes from the July 8th, 2024 PC meeting. <laughs> Second. Motion by Zagami, second by Mumper. On the question, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Communications, disclosures, and recusals. Members of the body should make any required disclosures or recusals during this time. Do we have any? Moving on, uh, item number four, written communications received. There was the one I received from Trustee Pinsonal that'll be read in under agenda item seven. Uh, public hearings, zoning map and text amendments, conditional uses and related requests. Project number 20240225, Mike Greenheck requesting a conditional use permit at 3805 Eau Claire Avenue to allow for the construction of a 1500 square foot accessory building for personal use within the SFL, single family residential large lot zoning district, where the maximum allowed accessory building size within the SFL district is 1,000 square feet. I'll open the public hearing and presentation by applicant and or staff. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Chair Cronin, members of the commission. So the item before you, um, as you stated, is to exceed the 1,000 square foot maximum allowable in the SFL zoning district. And just for a little bit of context, I'm sure you're all very familiar, but the reason the conditional use is required is just so the accessory structures don't dwarf the principal structure and the principal structure is still kind of the focal point of the lot. And then also as they get larger, a lot of times it's just nice to review aesthetics and make sure that there's good compatibility that way with what's proposed. Um, and, and staff does think that this example does. So, um, it will have matching steel siding with stone accent at the base. No. The roof materials and roof line will match. And there's also a really nice site. I went by there today. Um, it's a nice home and plenty of space um, next to it to accommodate the accessory structure. And then there's nice space to tie into the existing driveway. So there will be nice flow and circulation. Um, so the, the proposal, the the dimensions meet dimensional standards for the district, the height meets dimensional standards for the district. Um, the overall square footage, I believe, proposed is 1,500 square feet, so it's 500 more than what's typically allowed. And the scale and configuration, I, I think, is appropriate for the site. And I'll turn it back over to the commission for any questions. Okay. Um, is, is Mike present here tonight? Do you have anything you would like to add, sir? No, just essentially a three small garage. Okay, thank you. Um, public comment period. Is there anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment on this specific agenda item? Second time, anybody online that would like to make a comment or in the audience? Third time, any comments? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, recommendation from staff? I'm recommending approval. Okay. Um, discussion and action by the planning commission. We have the, yeah, we do have the qualifying questionnaire here. So if nobody's got any questions or further discussion, we can move right along and go through that. Um, after. 
Number one, is the proposed conditional use consistent with the comprehensive plan, this chapter, and all other plans, programs, and ordinances adopted by the village? Yes. Number two, the proposed conditional use in its proposed location and as depicted on the required site plan will not result in a substantial or undue adverse impact on nearby property, the character of the neighborhood, environmental factors, traffic factors, parking, public improvements, public property, or rights of way, or other matters affecting the public health, safety, or general welfare, either as they now exist or as they may in the future be developed as a result of the implementation of the provisions of this chapter, the comprehensive plan, or all other plans, programs, and ordinances adopted by the village. That's a long one. Yes. Number three, does the proposed conditional use maintain the desired consistency of land uses, land use intensities, and land use impacts as related to the environs of the subject property? Yes. Number four, is the proposed conditional use located in an area that will be adequately served by and will not impose an undue burden on any of the improvements, facilities, utilities, or services provided by public agencies serving the subject property? Yes. yes. Do the potential public benefits of the proposed conditional use outweigh potential adverse impacts of the proposed conditional use after taking into consideration the applicant's proposal and any requirements recommended by the applicant to ameliorate such impacts? Yes. yes. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. No, motion by Decent, second by Gernt. On the question, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So carried. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, project number or number item number six. Project number two zero two four zero zero nine zero. David Barnes of U-Haul of Wisconsin, requesting a conditional use permit at five thousand nine Schofield Avenue to allow the expansion of a personal storage facility land use within the B three general business zoning district with WHPA Wellhead Protection Zone A Overlay District. I'll open the public hearing. Presentation by applicant and or staff. Thank you again, Chair Barnes. So this item is, has been in development for a little bit and the proposal is to expand the existing new hall facility on Schofield Avenue, um, uh, 5009 Schofield Avenue. And it's the development of some buildings that are less of what's existing now to kind of fill out that end. And we have had some difficulty as staff evaluating this because the proposed structures are actually repurposed truck beds that have kind of a steel frame support. So from the building code standpoint, looking at them as permanent structures, we can't determine at this time if they, if they truly meet building code requirements. And so what was asked of the applicant is that either it would be required to go through DSPS or um, that they would need to be traditional stick built structures in place of the repurposed truck bed proposal. There's also some question because it is a street facing elevation, if what is proposed now would meet design guidelines, building design guidelines as outlined in the zoning code, and we haven't seen an elevation to confirm that that fact. Um, so Mr. Barnes is um, collecting some additional information and we're recommending that this be deferred until next month when we have that information and we can give the planning commission a more complete evaluation and determination based on that. Okay. Um, and is Dave, are you here? Do you have anything you'd like to add, sir? No, I just um, appreciate the staff's time and, and effort on this. Um, we ran into a couple of walls. We have an in-house design built structure engineering thing, but we just can't get the information that we need to get to you to for you guys to decide if it's legal or not. So um, I'm just asking if we can push it off a month. By the time we got to this point, we had already got it scheduled. So sure. I apologize for, for that, but uh, we'll get you get the items that we need and, and we'll try it. Sounds good. Well, we, we appreciate it. We, we understand. Um, I'll make a motion to 
let me can I finish? Let me go through the motions with the. So um, I'm gonna let's see here where are we at. Public comment. public comment. So is there anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment on this specific agenda item? Second time, anybody would, that would like to make a comment? Third time. Hearing no comments, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, it sounds like staff is recommending to defer it. Okay. Is there? Absolutely. I think that would actually be prudent so we don't have to go through this again. All right. So uh, are they, I mean, is it considered a permanent structure, uh, kind of your gem? You know what I mean? So, so what the information we have now, I don't think we can categorize it as such. So that's where we would need either DSPS to confirm that they consider it as such based on like their analysis of wind loads, snow loads, all the measurements they have to make that determination. So for what we have now, we would consider it a temporary structure. Yeah, and I would agree with that, I guess. And um, so, so what are we looking for? So, I, well, as an example, you have a USAM over here that is repurposed uh, shipping containers, right? And uh, they've been there for a long, long time. I'm just curious how we should be looking at that as a as going forward, because you know, to me, they aren't permanent structures. So, what code do they fall under? What are we trying to what are we trying to determine? You know, I mean that, that truck body going down the highway at 70 or 80 miles an hour is under a significant amount of wind load that it's not going to experience sitting on the ground. You know, so I'm or or is it that we just don't want the way that it looks. No, I think there's just a struggle everywhere because Dave's actually working in a number of communities. So he's had different projects and Roman talked to like Wapaka. Everyone's struggling on how to handle the, this situation on these truck beds and how, because normally they are looked at, like they have to go to the state for approvals because of the size and, and the use. So um, Roman was talking to other communities and and so they, they basically asked him to either get an engineer to kind of sign off on it, I believe, um, or go and take it through the state. And so that's kind of where he's stuck because there's been some changes at U Haul too to get some of that information in the house. So he was reaching out to to a local engineering firm to try to kind of work through this. But he's kind of he's experiencing this in not just here, but in other communities. So so Dave, if I could, yeah. uh, the picture that we have, uh, those boxes actually look pretty good. And I'm assuming that U Haul is just using trucks that have been worn out? I mean, is that? Up yeah, up? so we buy chassis caps, and then all you haul trucks that you see, the actual van body on them, we manufacture in house. Um, so when the, the chassis cab gets to the end of its usable life, we sell it off as a used truck, with, and we take the bodies off. And when we take the bodies off, we set them all in a row, um, pipe together. We actually replace the existing truck door with an actual storage door. We bolt them all together. We anchor them all to the ground, okay. um, and we did do some uh, some of the civil engineering plans for that. Um, we bolt them all to the ground. Then we go around and we skirt them with the same kind of corrugated metal that exists on the existing buildings. We, we make it match the existing buildings uh, best that we can. Um, and then we put a roof over it. We lock them all together. Um, we put stronger door frames in them and um and then we have in a couple of municipalities run into um like Carrie said you know making it look not so much just like a big chunk of metal where we put decorative like brick stuff on the on the 50 percent 40 percent depending on the base and things like that so we have done that um in Oshkosh I believe it's one that we did break on uh, we're going to be doing brick and we'll pack up um, so you know, as far as the structure goes, it's it's probably probably pretty. I mean, just probably pretty structurally sound. I just have to be able to prove that. And yeah, well, to me, to me, the structure is very robust. The question is, what does it look like when you're all done with the project? So the picture, first picture I'm looking at is just the boxes stacked right next to each other, yeah. and and the it actually looks good because they appear to be relatively new 
for repainted boxes, so to speak. Um, if you're actually repurposing old boxes that have some damage or whatever, uh, doing something to strip them or whatever makes sense. And to me, it's not a structural thing so much as it as it is what's what what does it look like? You know, so what's here here? It's right here. Yeah. So so to me, it's not much of a structural question as it is what's what is what do we like as far as the appearance of this project when it's all done? So that having running through a whole bunch of trying to have through some hoops to come up with some engineering thing that may or may not mean anything. Well, they need that for the building permit, so that's where that's coming in too on how to handle it for the building permit. I, I, yeah, I was going to say I think from a structural standpoint. Yeah, we want to some some way anytime public's going to enter it, you've got to have a structural engineer sign off on it. Somehow, and because in essence, he's self designing this, or, right? Right, and yeah. so somebody's got to sign off on that in order for the public to enter. Right, you guys do have an aesthetic, and, and that was a question that I had based off of these are rather large, long buildings, they kind of meet that where it's supposed to have multiple, um, you know, kind of facade treatments or colors, things like that. But if you look at it, there's a a lot of wetland area there that they're not going to be able to use, but we don't really know what's going in or what could go in on Von Kennel, the, the property wraps that the vendors own. So it could be, it's, you know, it could be a bank, it could be a restaurant, it could be a lot of different things. We don't know. So that was a question that I had. Are you guys going to be okay with, you know, they've got some landscaping treatments that they're looking to add if that's okay. Um, instead of like a brick facade. We weren't sure what you wanted either, but this would be the time to kind of talk about that because we'll be bringing it back. I, I guess my question goes back to how, how are you intending to meet the structural sign off? Um, so uh, like I said, in, we, we built the truck bodies in house. So there, we have a design company in house that um, sends structural drawings to the plant to build the truck box. I'm in the process of getting those drawings and then taking them to a structural engineer to do all the wind load calculations, snow load calculations, and things like things like that to verify that it's just as good, if not better, than what you would allow if I was to build a metal building like the other three units that are already there. And it actually, you know, on an engineer, it's it's probably because it's the way that the truck bodies are built. Each individual is probably structurally stronger than a traditional storage building. I, I don't disagree with you on that, but when you put a roof on it, too, it, I don't want to say this. Like, I could say I've got a structurally sound body of a band. Now I'm going to connect them somehow. But somebody's got to sign off on those connections, right? And then you've got to have somebody else that's going to say, I've got a roof where you're going to self design the roof. And then when you tie it all together as one project, some engineer's got to sign off on the overall. That's my thought, right? That's, yeah, that's and that's what, that's what he's got to get done through. Is it through the state? Uh, Roman asked for it either an engineering stamp, I believe, or I don't, I don't know, I'm going through these. Yeah. He, Roman's recommendation was to do either DSPS to confirm or to do traditional state bill. Those were the two. If if, if the, whatever DSPS is equivalent, if, if you were able to get that through structural engineering, okay. Roman may say that we might need. But his two recommend his two pathways, and Travis, I don't know if you're going to do that, were either DSPS or traditional state bill. That's what he asked. Gary. David, it looks like uh, from the appearance, are you guys putting a, a metal roof over the top of these? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because uh, you know, having having them be individual units um, creates a gap in between each one. So we put a roof over them one for aesthetics and two just to um, to get water flow and everything off of them. How did you meet your uh, criteria in Oshkosh? That was before my time with the company. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, I know Roman had talked to Oshkosh and they didn't seem like they were even sure. Well, what I believe 
when Roman talked to Oshkosh and Wapaka that it wasn't the same type of construction. I believe he had confirmed with them that it wasn't this exact same term that's 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 style. Famous. I think it was a different type of metal building. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can see where the strength is there, but now you're trying to put a roof over the top of, and I'm assuming a lot of these roofs that are on there are translucent roofs. Are they? No, um, it's got a little bit rough on it now. It does. Um, and then we, we do like a we frame out a rough structure just like you would on a normal building and we, we put steel roofing on it. Yeah. So the width of that with the truss, I think that's where you just need the engineering. So mm -hmm. Shane, you know where we're going with that because you got the middle of an eight foot box or a seven foot box. That's quite a span for the snowball. If you're one and spanning all the way across the whole body with a little bit, you do have to hatch over the top of it. But you know, a roof, a, a stationary roof versus a, a truck roof is completely different because you're, you're going down the road, you're blowing snow off, you're not accumulating it over a longer period of time. So I think you're, I think you're on the spot just trying to get somebody to engineer to make sure that the structure is fine. And get that information. That sounds like. Back. And Jenna, as far as the, the back appearance for the, I'm assuming the facing the back side or, or that side roll will be the one that would be most critical on. Yeah, it faces back. Where the landscaping issue was. Yeah, so I think as long as it meets the elevation requirements, long bond kennel, then yeah. we're good. And, and that can be, you know, it, it can be any kind of nicer. It doesn't have to be super expensive, just as long as it's a little bit nicer material and, uh, uh, and it's, it's jazzed up a little bit different than just straight steel. What is the requirement on the, is it 40%? Yeah, they might go like, if it's a 10 foot, they might go 44 feet up or 6 feet up or something. You have to figure your percentage off across the back square footage, but you might only have to go off a certain height. Yeah, so or maybe you do that and put some verticals up every so many feet or something like that to make it a, to break it up a little bit. Right, so yeah. it's not so monotonous. It's a landscape between. Dave? Did, Dave, did you say you were going to be putting all new uh, overhead doors in too? Yeah, we, we, take, uh, we, we take the existing truck doors out because they're old. You know, they're used. And we put actual storage overhead garage doors in like just like if anybody notices the place we replaced 175 doors in the last year at that, that location and they're all brand new doors they look really nice that's why the pictures the, the doors are all brand new the structure that holds the door into the truck body is all brand new that's all yeah we replaced all that i think they're very workable just have to get to tell us uh who what do you do with the surface tunnel? There's a lot of uh, hard surface in there. What do you do with the water? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The runoff. You have a lot of surface. What are you, what would how would you handle the runoff? Um, the runoff. Uh, we did do a, a, a landscaping grading plan and erosion control plan with it. Um, yeah, but where that all that water go? The landscaping doesn't take care of it. We have a retention basin or. Well, I mean, we're, we're right up against the uh, Karanda ditch there. Yeah. And then close to the west, towards the uh, wetland and then the little creek. Yeah, so we dump it there. It was a man-made man drainage fix that was cut through the property about 75 years ago. That was right up against the backside of where this goes. It feeds down into the stormwater utility. Okay. It's running off now, right? It's all hard surface, isn't it? What's that? It's all hard surface anyhow right now. It's gravel or yeah. It's, so it's, all, it's already running off. Yeah. I, yeah, there's a lot of whack out and a lot of gravel out there. You know, right there is all the whack out. Mm hmm That's not his location. It's not? No, that's not his. Correct? No. Those aren't that's not your location. No, they didn't the, do that. no those the, are, okay. those are this example. So yep. Well, um, 
Does that give you does that give you enough direction, Dave, on where we're at with everything? Yeah. If I if I if I would have gotten an answer today, I would have brought it for you. <laughs> I've been I've been telling the people in Arizona and every deputy in the summer people take a lot of vacations. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so so will this have to come back for another public hearing or no because you've heard it if you okay. just defer action he you don't have to take um, action on this for 60 days or whatever it is so yeah. we'll bring back the additional information so i'm looking for a motion to defer i'll make a motion to defer this uh, so the rest of the information that staff's looking for is gotten in here Okay, so we have a motion by Deason, second by Roy. I have a question on that. So, do you need a hard date if we defer it? Like, no, because there is some things in there too that if the applicant agrees, we can extend it beyond that. So, we'll hope that we get it next month. And if we don't, we'll talk about it. Okay, then. sounds good. So, um, any more on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. So carried. Is, is Trav still on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm still on. Okay. Sounds good. Um, new business item number seven, project number two zero two four zero one one zero, discussion and or action on proposed amendment to site plan for multi-tenant commercial development at twenty three zero two Schofield Avenue, uh, lock redevelopment, pin number one nine two two eight zero eight one eight one zero nine nine two. I did receive a written communication from Trustee Pinson on this today. I'm going to read that in real quick. Um, it says, Chairman Cronin, I see that the Schofield Avenue Lockery project containing firehouse subs is on the agenda to amend their plans. I would ask that staff review the minimum and maximum parking requirements for this project based on the current zoning code. The use has changed, the number of tenants has changed, and therefore the parking requirements may or may not be met with the additional tenants. There may be more aspects of the site review process process which need to be revisited due to the uses changing. I'm sure staff can give feedback on that. I seem to recall parking being an issue with an, another Schofield Avenue project where staff had concern with min, minimum and maximum parking until they learned there was more than one tenant. Please include this as a written communication for tonight's meeting. Thanks, Jim Pinsonal. Um, so otherwise, I think it sounds like staff's got the floor here. Yeah, so this project received a TIF funding in May. Um, and you basically approved a three tenant building with the condition we were still waiting for some garbage information. Um, a few months later, we learned that the garbage hauler wouldn't sign off on the location of the garbage. So we were gonna have to bring back just the site plan and the landscaping plan um, this month, just to show you, um, because this gets attached to the development agreement um, that was approved by the board. Within the last couple of weeks, we also learned that the original tenant, Anytime Fitness, has pulled out of the project and Lockery um, and Steve Stair have decided to turn it into a four tenant building. So they basically are taking that um, large tenant one that had Anytime Fitness and they're just dividing it in half. So you have updated building elevations. Um, it's also having to go back to the state because there's a new access point into their new door. So that's being done right now in the process. Um, really all it is is changing um, a door on the elevation, but we have to bring that back to you because that, this is also was attached and approved um, in the development agreement. Um, in regards to the parking, Basically, the Anytime Fitness would have required one space per three patrons it, it, it talks about. So typically in these buildings, we just utilize when it's like a four tenant building. Um, the main commercial occupancy would, um, the parking requirement is usually um, one space per every 300 gross square feet floor area. Um, so in the case of those two buildings for those that tenant space, it's probably going to require less parking spaces because you're going to have probably an office or a building. Um, it could be like a Kitchen. small restaurant. It could be just a little like 
a cell com. Really, you have a lot more cold Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to require less because you have to think that most likely that that space is going to get divided in half because half of it's going to be used for the employees. So we weren't concerned with that. Um, we did look at that um, when it came in. Um, we have the site plans staff report, report that we used. We have updated that for this. So the only other plan that changed on this was the landscaping plan um, because of the garbage enclosure, essentially. So um, the, the plans that are needing to be updated and reapproved are um, ele building elevations, landscaping, um, and the, just the general site plan, just because they situated the garbage differently. Is that this? Yep. yep. So you say the garbage is all the way over there. It used to be the other way. It used to like stick in, and they it's couldn't. Right here, right? Yeah, it was it's quite a ways away from the building. That's well, where they want. That's where it was. They just turned it. So they're planning on having that all for what was it? Cut off. Cut off. Cut off. That's how the lines. That's how the hauler signed off on it. The only mm -hmm. other change that they did bring up um, that I had in there was the rooftop mechanicals. Two of them, I believe, had to be placed into the back. So I don't know if you want them to add additional screening. There is a slide of that. Um, there is a privacy fence that goes all the way along the back there. So I, as staff, we didn't necessarily think it was needed. Um, I think it's a six foot. Is it much for security or is it privacy? Or just um, it was required because actually there is a multifamily. If there's a home behind, actually, mm -hmm. they do. If you might remember, they yep, they rezoned and cut off a piece of it for this. So there is still a property behind it. So, so it was required to either have a buffer yard or put up a fence. So if that privacy fence at some point were to be it damaged, it would have to be repaired. Yeah. Okay. So the waste management approved that? Yes. It's Carter's. Carter's did. Go harder. Yeah. So as part of it, and that, that was the outstanding condition from your first approval, is that we had never received the garbage enclosure approval. Typically what happens is they'll put it on a plan, and then they'll find out later that their garbage hauler can't get to it. Um, so that was the case here. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? So it looks like the main, it's just the garbage adding the second, the second door on the front, correct? Yeah, so it would be a, an approval of the building elevation, the landscape plan, um, the general site plan. And, and staff feels comfortable with the number of parking spots yes. um, that are on the site plan currently. Yes. Yeah. So we did public safety issue moving anything around garbage, anything else? Mm -hmm. Not a problem. No. Marty's shaking his head no in the back there. Okay. Yeah, Is Marty's a part of all of our reviews. So he he signed off on it a long time ago. They're going to have to park their snow away every time. I thought that's what they said originally. There yeah, might I be one them. spot off to the left. I remember bringing that up. That was in the original approvals. Yeah. So I guess I can't really, they haven't changed anything of the, the site plan. So you can kind of see where they have their retention ponds. There's one in the two in the front, and then that one on the north side. Off the drive through. Okay. What's your pleasure? I recommend approval to the British Board of the amended site plan for the multi tenant commercial development at 2302 Scope Valley. Motion by Zagami. Second. Second by Gernt. On the question. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well carried. Um, item number eight, project number 2023-0085, discussion and or action on revised 
landscaping and architectural plans for ABC Weston LLC 3200 Schofield Avenue. Referred from Board of Trustees, pin number 192-2808-173-0982. Is the development agreement with this project? No. So I guess I can start off there. It's being sent back to you because Travis went to do the final on this project and the landscaping did not meet at all what they said that they were going to put in. Um, the elevations were off on a couple of the sides. They weren't major, but it, the big issue is the landscaping. Um, so we brought it to the board's attention at their last meeting and they sent it back to you for review. So they essentially gave us updated plans on what was put at the site. Um, it's a lot of, they use a lot of rock features instead of landscaping, essentially. So Carrie did put the numbers in, um, kind of showing what was required and what they proposed. Yeah, so, I, so looking at the landscaping, if you want to look at that first. So the landscape plan they originally proposed, everything was well met. And our code is very typical. It's points and species. And as you well know, you get certain, you get more points for larger plantings and things that'll provide more screening, et cetera. Um, within the landscape section, the only examples to get relief are things like um, stormwater management, um, in a redevelopment example, if there's not enough room to work with, but we don't really have a provision for alternative landscape styles. It's pretty much based on points and species. So the original landscape plan provided an adequate amount of all of our categories, street trees, hard surface, building foundation, buffer yard, and then general yard. And what, like Jen said, when Travis went out, um, they were deficient in all of the areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they didn't have the adequate tree tree planting, they didn't have the hard surface, didn't have building foundation. Um, there's a fence provided to meet that buffer yard requirement, and then they didn't have the general yard points. And what they're what, what I think they're hoping is that the hardscape, kind of the variety of rocks and things like that meets the requirements. Um, under our current ordinance, we would have to have an ability to provide that out, and we're going to talk about some of the um, zoning code sections later. Um, but as it stands now, they're just deficient. I mean, they would need to provide something, um, you know, in terms of points that would meet the points requirements. It, was real, it, it wasn't an above and beyond, I guess, as part of the tip. It was just kind of a, here's what our requirements are um, in terms of points, and they're not met. And then in terms of the elevations, they have two elevations that um, meet the, those percentages that we were talking about earlier with the U-Haul project. Um, it's glass, it's, it's different types of materials that can be used to do that wood, um, block, brick. And then there's two elevations that are quite a bit under those percentages. So that provision, I think there is a, um, so again, their standards are covered by the zoning code. Um, there is a line that the design permit shall be met as determined practical by the applicable site plan approval authority in that example. Um, so I guess some could, someone could say there's a little bit more subjectivity there. Um, if the planning commission felt it was adequate or that it met kind of the spirit of the code. Um, but those are the two primary areas, the facades, the architectural facades, and then the landscaping that there are deficiencies in. And, um... Andy, Adri Andy, Adrian, and I'm sorry, I forget your name, sir. Yeah. So Andy and Jeff, um, Andy owns Adventure Awaits, and Jeff, I assume, is the property investor. They're both here if anybody has any questions that um, so they would like to ask. Carrie, do you have an example of what was versus what you put in? In terms of laws? So the, so the staff report has the before and after elevations, and then in terms of photos, I see the elevations, but do we have do we have current photos of the landscaping? Yeah, 
So if you go to page, I think it's page 53, that's the original approval. So 54. 54. Yeah. 54. And then it's oh, and then the as-built the as is halfway down on the edge. So there's one of them. Well, well. So the, 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 the top one is pretty close. So the first two are pretty much the the brown on the, the third one down, that's just the pencil. That basically responds to what I can on the right side. Guys, did you, did you have a reasoning for why the change was done, or was this just something that the contractor in general did, or? No, it's the, all your elevations and stuff like that were just kind of, the um, contractor did suggest that we go with something like this and like that. We didn't know what the elevation percentage was supposed to be as being at the back side, which is the north side, and the west side both face like other buildings. They're not street sides. Uh, we weren't sure what that was supposed to be. Once we put up the brown fencing like Travis said around the three, Air handling units that really added a lot of really nice brown color. So if you were in between O'Reilly Auto Park and our building, you saw that brown, which really offset it. And if you come off that back road, which is to the north, the building really doesn't necessarily face that property. It's coming up there. There you've got current pictures there now. Um, you see the brown fencing here too. We've got a big overhead door in the back, but you have a couple of windows up top and that as well. So that's the side right there that faces O'Reilly Auto Park. We're not sure. And then that's your view going down the fence line looking east. And right there, that's that's the uh, north side of the building, which I guess the faces the duplexes and the residents right there. But it also faces the street up. That's the hard part of the location is you have multiple streets because it's from different angles, so that's why and it's classified. I'm assuming um, it's, 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 it was more cost effective to go with straight panels yeah. than it was to do with colored panels and split them up. Correct. Yeah, there you can see. So now you're getting to the current pictures, if you ever scroll up through that. That's currently what it looks like. So if you look through all those pictures and see the landscape that we did, like Jen Higgins said before, we did do a lot of hardscaping. The rocks, the mulch around there. Once we were designing the front, we realized we didn't want bushes in the health inspector too, kind of mentioned it. Bushes closer to the building with an open air cafe is just going to draw more you know, bugs, insects, that type of thing, so we stayed away from that. The part here that's right by the cafe and that as well, we put in over 25 little big boulders in there, and we actually really increased our budget for landscaping without realizing all the different bushes and stuff that we placed throughout the whole rest of the like, state of property. Yeah. So when you look at some of those pictures just from the, what it looks like now, yeah, it's, it doesn't have as many bushes, but like I said, we did more hardscaping, <coughs> the 
maintenance and for aesthetics that will look a lot longer for a longer period of time compared to bushes that die, trim, trim on weed, whatever it might be as well. So we get it. We understand. The hard part is uh, we've got a code to comply to. Right. And if the contractor or somebody makes it, we have to follow percentages. And if we let everybody just go out and build whatever they want to do, we kind of lose control over the requirements and the standards. I mean, the building is beautiful. You guys have done a fantastic job. It's a heck of a lot better than what was there. I mean, I think everybody can agree with that. Mm -hmm. But I think there's the, the hard part is, is there was changes done that weren't part of the agreement that should have been done, right? That's the hard part. Right. And and nobody's, I don't think anybody's trying to be a jack wagon about it. It's just, uh, he's got a, Travis got a job to do, and uh, he's got to get final, and it's different than what the clients were submitting. So, and then he goes to Jen, and Jen says, oh goodness, I've got to read Tom, Dick, and Harry crawling up my butt because of this percentage of requirement that we need, uh, and how do I justify why I allowed this to happen over here and not over here? So that's that's the hard part. But you guys, honestly, the building is you've done a fantastic job. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So it really does. To that to that point, though, Gary, I mean, um, Gary, you had mentioned that we don't have a provision for for hardscaping. No, not. Is that something that we can look at? Though? We can, and that's we've got some talk um, later on in the agenda on on ways that we can update it. Um, it's just that hardscaping has never been given a whole lot of points. It's allowed to a certain amount on a site, but it's not given enough points probably to meet. Usually like a tree, um, that gets more points. I mean, we can look at the code, but it's just kind of weighing that, like, what do you want to see there? They have a lot of pretty like pots and things that they're using, but that isn't typically allowed in landscaping codes because so, they could put that in every year, yeah, but if they, they sell stop. it, then it goes away. Yeah. And then you have a site that's just a bunch of rocks. But in so, the same token, Jen, I think we've all come to realization we don't have a landscaping control officer at all town forcing that everything that we approve in five years from now stays in its place because things die. And we don't go back after that. We we try to we try to, and I think this comes to some something like we probably always struggle with. I think our, our planning commission has is some of the landscaping requirements, and then who's who's there policing it after it's been. Well, and we person. are enforcing on it, like across the street. Quick Trip took out a bunch of theirs. They're going to have to put it back in. We just need to contact them. Um, so it's on our to-do list um, for things to do. Um, it really is, is just as staff, we don't know how to handle this one because no, there's I, no I out it. on it. I, I get it. I and you're going to start a precedent. And, yep. and is it, do we bring every single landscape plan before you guys so that you sign off on it? Because we went to the point value just because, like when I first got here, they put just like landscaping around parking lots. That's really what it was. And so when we redid the code, we decided to like, okay, let's do the whole site, um, do a point scale on different things. We can look at it and address different things, but I don't know if we'll be able to go down far enough where they aren't going to be able to, like, aren't going to have to add something. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, especially in the parking lot. Hey, Jen. Nope. Doesn't look, it doesn't appear that it looks like we've got a lot of multiple rooms and so on and so forth. And you got salt in there, and it's hard on plants and trees. And we, we, we did that subdivision over here with two pines, and um, there was some salting that had it because there was a really bad ice storm, and they salted it. We lost some trees because of that. So it is hard on landscaping. So, I mean, I, I, I agree with some of the hardscape, the, some of that. I mean, that, that still costs a lot of money. Right. But, um, and they've done a great job with it, but like you said, Jen, the hard part is, is we don't want to sit here and battle between us, right? They're, they got a job to do, 
Um, things have changed than from what was proposed. This is probably the first time you guys have done a project like this. And same with the builder, um, uh, Kiri. Kiri did a great job with it. He's probably not um, understanding how strict that some of these codes are, and you, and you gotta follow to a T. So uh, it was probably easier for him to get solid sheets from the roof to the roof down to the instead of separating them and having a joint and having different, different colors. And then also, you guys may have been involved in the landscape, but these, they, everybody's got a job to do, and I don't think anybody's trying to, like you said, try to be a jerk about it. This was the, mm -hmm. we got to somehow hold everybody to a, a certain standard, and it puts staff in a bad position. Change. So, Trav, um, just hold that thought. I got two other people that were ahead of you. So, Roy, go ahead. You have your hand up. One other thing I picked up on are we fighting amongst ourselves? In other words, if the health inspector's going to put more foliage, more bushes in, it's not good for the picture serving food. Then why? But, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I just thought you're there, and I don't know that what that, you know, is that common correct? And is that something that we should be? Thinking about the landscape code in relation to there are places that are so I know it's never come up. I mean, we can talk to the health department, but Tyne and Seller has. Yeah, I, I mean, I just want to make that comment. That's, that's why I said I don't know if that's correct or not. And, and I think part of it, Jen, is when you're designing a plan like this, you're trying to get the most uh, access to the to the property, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get green spaces as well or landscaping spaces. Uh, so it's not the easiest thing to do either. Right? And I. Can imagine. Oh, I should bring it back to the planning department and discuss it with them before they just go ahead and do it and say, here it is. Yeah. I, so, you know, sometimes it's, it's really easy for us because we have to be, uh, this is what we do every day. A lot of the laymen or people, they just think they're building a building and they don't understand. So I'll, 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 I agree with you, uh, Shane, but again, these guys are probably their first time building a building and the general contractor, he's probably not, he's not here. But then we know why. I mean, I know why. I, like, I love Kerry. He does a great job. It's just he's, he, this, he wouldn't be good at the meeting like this. So it was mentioned in multiple meetings that it, any changes had to come back through um, because this was, I mean, it was talked about at the board level. I, I guess some of it, the big issue is it, it received TIF Monday, and so there's a development I agreement. I, I yeah. thought you asked so, that you so asked and you said no. And I said, oh, they, no, I didn't they, hear you. They did. Yeah, you, oh, you, you said, said no, Jeff. Oh, I so, didn't hear so you. So we should by the way. I didn't oh, see I'm all sorry. this, and I saw money on the like, How did we get money without TIF? Oh, I didn't hear him. I actually didn't hear you. So what's the development agreement said? It's so basically, I mean, you've seen all the development agreements. It's tied to the site plan. Correct. So the board approves an amount after they, you approve the, the development agreement after this body approves the site plan. And it says right in there, any changes have to come back through. Because essentially what we do on every project now is Travis is taking the site plan out there and following up on everything. And so if we don't have what was built, then we're asking for updated plans or them to install. So that's kind of where we're getting stuck now on these projects, which is he's going back through all the ones for the last couple of years. Hold, hold that thought, Gary. I got two people ahead. Yes, so sir. Dave, go ahead. Um, a carrier, Jen. So I heard you say you, you got 25 of those big boulders. So how many boulders? I mean, I'm just looking for the number. How many yeah. boulders do they have to get rid of and stick some trees or bushes in so, to come up to where we'd be okay? So the code, as the code reads now, you can get up to 200 points for boulders, and no more than that. Um, so the table, I think they were deficient overall in terms of points. Um, the original I had over 3,300 points that were really a Okay, that doesn't help me. I need a number for boulders, gone trees, in or okay. bridges, or whatever. Sure. So you need two more trees. So, yeah, you know, there's too many people talking at once here. So, how many how many points do they need to have? So originally, it was 3,337. And how many do they have? I counted 464. 
they saw on Friday. So they got a little more than 10% of what we're looking for, or what they said they were going to put in. So, Travis, and we could have had this. Thank you. So, the code requires, so the code has a list of different point values. So, a large deciduous tree is 125 points. A small deciduous tree is 60. Evergreen tree is 50. A uh, large shrub is 20. Uh, small shrub, 10. Annual perennial beds, including rain gardens and vegetative roofs, one point per square foot of bed up to a maximum of 500 points per lot. A landscaping firm is one point per lineal foot of firm up to one or to a maximum of 150 points per lot. Natural landscape boulders is 10 points per boulder up to a maximum of 200 points per lot. So we don't tell them what to put in. They can choose. It's up to them. To go. Yeah. It's so it's it's a pretty I'm just, big. I'm just difference. trying to get somewhere to where we've got some common ground with everybody. Okay. Them and us and well, staff. And hold, hold that thought for a sec, Trav. Is that the original? Let me let Trav talk because he hasn't had a chance here. Trav, go ahead. No, all I want to say that you guys just answered what I was asking. I want to know what the point value was uh, from what they agreed on to where they were currently at um, and exactly just come on, come on like a common ground. Like, hey, if you do this, it's acceptable. I mean, the building looks awesome what they did. I mean, coming from what that building was compared to what it is now, I mean, it, it, it's awesome to have that in town. So what can we do to work with them? to get to the points and everybody be happy in the situation. I agree. Um, so I think what we should do is probably tackle these individually. Um, we should look at the, the elevations on, as one discussion and then tackle the landscaping. Otherwise we're gonna bounce back and forth all night. So what do you guys wanna tackle first? I think the landscaping is a little bit easier. I was going to say, I think the building exterior might like be easier. Huh? I guess the uh, building exterior, I think, is, is pretty good. I mean, I don't really have an issue. With it. What? So, I guess my question would be on the on the elevations. What what do they what what do they have to be, and what are they at currently? On um, east, north, west, south. Because I, I can see the photos, but there's percentages that have yeah, to be met, correct? So. Yeah, I think the two that are deficient are the west and north elevations. They're both required to be at 40, and they're at 11.7 and 13.9, respectively. But then, Travis, would you say one of those is actually street facing? Um, the north, the, the north, and it is street facing. But, yeah. So that should have that should read 50. The north. So what's counted as an elevation? Are so are the, the windows, the, doors, everything counted as? Just a second. Let's get what you know, street access to begin with. Yeah. So so it doesn't. You know, I, I go around the back of O'Reilly's every day, and that building doesn't face that street that O'Reilly, the backside of O'Reilly, doesn't face that. It's kind of at a diagonal, right? Am I am I imagining that right? Um. I mean, it's kind of like on a curve. Yeah. Right? So that. And O'Reilly's was built under our current code, correct? I know you weren't here at that time, but no, it wasn't. I don't think it was. When was that built? Uh, I think it's been there a while. I think the code was updated after. The code was updated in um, 15, 2015. I think that one predates. So to me, the north side faces the residential neighborhood. The west side faces O'Reilly's. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, when you swing around the corner, you can look diagonally down the north side or uh, the, uh, the west side as you as you you know as you go around the corner. But I wouldn't call those as street facing elevations. I would say the south and the east would be correct. Right. And 
those meet elevation requirements, correct? Yes. So and then they added some color with the fences on the back side. Is that correct? I mean, and again, I'm trying to imagine that's like our bike. So the fences are different. Yeah, so so again, as you're around the corner, you know, backside, as you go around the backside of Riley, if you see the brown brown fences as you look down that direction. So, I, I mean, to me, they've added. Yeah, there you go. No, I, oh. yeah, that's the, that's the west side. Yeah, it's the O'Reilly side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the north side is going to be the further side. Yeah. Straight yeah. up there, which is got trees in the neighbor, right? Right there. That's the north side. That's not facing the road, is it? No. You get that that sidewalk goes right goes to the road. Glare. I'm standing on the road right now, facing and that's right in the back. Okay. Well, yeah, it's facing the road at an angle. Well, that's you know, I mean, that's, I, I mean, I don't care one way or another, but that's I was told that it was street side, and it's 50 or 40. I mean, they're still at 11. It's just, it's but there's a road right of way there, so it's considered a street. Yeah. So a road right of way, when you talk about a building facing the road, the road has to parallel that building to be to be that to be street facing. The fact that you can see the side of the building as you run the corner doesn't make it a street facing site to me. And that that's I agree. I would agree. I would agree. So I guess what's your what's what's the commission thought on the elevations? Are we? I think the elevations are fine. Leaving them as is. Right. The only comment: the addition of the fence. I mean, the, the, the color, the fence color, and the texture of the fence, I think, really makes up for the lack of anything other than steel on the back side of the building. Well, here's where I'll go with this. Uh, if we zoom in on this, this was submitted as vertical panels. The siding that's currently on there is horizontal. Yeah, the patch over the top. The siding is attached over the top of the steel. The yeah. steel. Mm -hmm. So they went over and above, so they went over and above, right? Because you, you could, I, I suppose it depends upon how we did it. Like mm -hmm. ours, we, we used, we shipped stuff out of Canada. It was aluminum, but it was horizontal as well. Um, so they put theirs on over the top of that. I think in the I think in the site plan it actually shows it as a horizontal. If you so zoom in on well then they, the the original approval the original approval is vertical, at least in the renderings I'm looking at right here. And it's steel. It's steel. And that's the that's the way Travis uh, Hoffman has it on his building. It's steel, but it's just a different color. So I'm looking at it like they they went horizontal with it, and it probably cost them, them a considerably amount more money. And I would imagine that's where Kerry probably said. But but again, in hindsight, it probably should have come in and said something, right? But I think the building is fine. In that opinion. But but again, here we are allowing something to go go back off of the standard. What's your what's your thoughts, Hushane? I think the ship that would always be stay because it's very challenging for the chamber. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. That we can work out with the landscaping and the landscaping they're doing well, you know, he's gonna put the three they can't put the walls together because the canopy needs some room to go so they need 30, 40 feet distance between them, so they can't have a lot of sweep up. They can have more of bushes growing up there. Yeah. There, there is the gravel that they can have there. So here's my thoughts on the landscaping. Is there, does this have to, do we have to, how, how much time do we have to sit on this? What do you think? Does it have, do we have to have an answer tonight? To I didn't tell, I didn't. I didn't remember them telling when it had to come back. Okay. I mean, there is money tied to because it. we do we do have an agenda item on here to for discussion or action on future zoning code amendments. Um, and one of the items is landscaping and preservation standards. I know Carrie has made some comments that we don't have provisions for hardscaping, 
Is this something that we want to look at? Because nobody else, I mean, the, the building looks beautiful, but in the landscaping, I think right. does, but nobody, right. nobody, nobody else has, has done this because it's something that's different right. to our area. I, I don't know if other communities in the Wasa area have or not, but is that something that we want to look at before we decide to take a look at this and tell them that something's got to get changed? I would agree. I was going to ask that, but I, I don't know what these hardscapes points would be and if it's even that, that's my only. I don't know what the square footages are of those hardscapes. And, and we may not have those answers tonight because it may it may take some time to do our do our research, see what other communities, whether they're here or in different parts of the U.S. where they don't use plants as much. Um, it may take some time to put that together before we can come up with a determination as, to, as far as what we have to do here. So is that the direction that we want to go with it? Is TIP funding held while that determination is made? And is that is there a comfort level in TIP funding being held until that determination is made? Well, I would, you haven't received any of your TIF funding yet, correct? No. OK. OK. How much is that? Yeah. Well, they, they get so much for the first building, and then there's so much for the second building. I think it was in. Yeah, it's 150, 115, 470 for the first building, and 34, 480 for the second building. So we have. Jen and Carrie, can, can I ask you what what is what is your guys' or gals' opinion? Well, right now there's no provision for us to give any kind of exception here. So we can't without a code change. The code change that we're recommending kind of gives you free will on what you want to do, but that means landscaping plans are probably coming to you. So if you want, it's probably best if we figure something out with the points so that we're not bringing you landscape plans every Time. You know, and the hard part is that you can draw a landscaping plan on a piece of paper and you don't know what it looks like it takes. Right. And a, a lot of places, a lot of places over plants too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we yeah. have run into that. Yeah. And we've had to tell people you don't need that much. Uh, Roy? Just one point. Are we being transparent or clear enough for people when they execute a development agreement? Yes. That Okay, yes. When, when you are finished and you're coming out, you're yes, because take we just plan yes. and look at what you built, and if it is not the same, you guys there even will be mentioned that here. I mentioned it in pretty much every meeting. So, okay. yes. So we are being. So there is a knew, document they that is supplied. Going to be I don't out. know if they read it. I mean, but that's yes. my point. Is it in page seventy three on the fine print, or you know, or is it, it has been because if somebody said to me, look. When you finish building this, we're coming out, we're going to take the plans, we're going to look at what you've got and what these plans say. And if they're not the same, yes, we are telling people this issue. because it you know, this happens all the time. Yeah, it mm -hmm. happen at the there's little tiny things that get missed. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. little things that get missed. Just one of them, they could have done the same thing. Yeah, I don't know that. I think that's the question or when I responded to that earlier. I don't know that they know that. That's why I asked if we're being clear enough what we're saying. We are, we're saying we are well, going to come out with these plans. <laughs> I don't know if Kerry knows how strict it is here. I'm just being honest. It's is not it, as strict as they got the money investment in there and they don't have a choice. They got to follow that procedure. If, if we didn't have any money investment, any tip money in there, I, I it was much easier decision to make that. I'm just, I know Kerry, and I just know that uh, uh, he probably didn't. Did he advise you guys? Well, Kerry wasn't involved much with the landscaping part of it. He was very professional at it with the building and followed it to a T. Yes. Well, not really. Well, close, close to it. So from the building plans, from the company, from the buildings and everything, and the architect of the state, he followed that. It's the facade is different though, right? The colors. No, the color, colors are what we propose right off the bat. No, well, no, they're not. You're talking, you're talking not colors, elevations. The percentages is what you're getting at. 
The colors are different. The colors are all no, if you look at the amount of the amount of them, the amount of the gene. Yeah, it's colors. colors. The colors are the same, but the amount of color that got changed was due to the fact of the cost. You saved cost on that. You saved it, yes. Yes, you did. Yeah. So that's the problem. Is who made that decision? I did. I guess I'll take responsibility for it because after we went through it, figure out what we all needed and realized the hearing Yes, it was higher than anybody ever expected. Oh, yeah. yeah, we do go well with the budget. Oh, yeah. the project, I believe so it made it that much better. We yeah. didn't cheat. All and you day. thought you were doing the right thing. Yeah, we I thought get it. we were doing the right thing. I get it. And then, as far as you know, being told that they're coming out, yeah, I didn't realize the whole landscaping but things all change and ideas changed as we went along with it and as the concrete got in as the building got done and what would look good and what would it you know that's everything we changed a few things just Andy excuse me just a sec can we can we please keep the chatter down a little bit over there please thank you and then I know Travis and Roman came out a couple times and said hey you guys have to have some more colors on the building well we didn't get to that point yet but it's all sitting there on scene but Never did they say anything after all our landscaping, a lot of the landscaping got in. We all said, hey, this doesn't match your plans, though. So we were aware. We did all. Well, they probably weren't aware you weren't done either. They might have just thought they're not done. They know they've got to come to a certain plan. Yeah. yeah we don't, I know. I know. But I'm just saying, like, what a gentleman had said, he said, maybe we didn't know or nobody told us. Nobody did tell us we're coming up with the exact same plan for landscaping. That landscaping plan was put together on such a quick spur of the moment type of thing by Rebuy to keep this project moving and keep it going. And then when it came time to actually do all of that, it just didn't fit exactly what our perception of was it to look like, nor would it have looked as nice as it does today. But that's when you should have come in and I know, and that's the point, of, like Gary said, this is our first big commercial project. You said you said you were going to do something, and then you did something different. We, we were looking for trees and bushes, and yeah. we got rocks. Yeah. Right? Because of what fits the building so much nicer, yeah. looks so much better, and less maintenance than it would last long. That building will look like that for 20 years compared to just take all these kitty corner from me. That's going to be dead. Look at the landscaping and some of the stuff from other places and buildings. It's dead. I don't. I don't think anybody's. We're, we're not disagree. Disagree. We're, I'm not disagreeing. We're, we're not going to get that up here yeah. because, because you know what? That's how we somewhat feel, but we have this ordinance to follow. Right? That's why I'm looking for your so advice. I think what we should do next. What would you like to well, say? I think what we should do the if if we're going to tackle the the code, Jen, this needs to probably just get deferred for a little bit here, correct? That's right. I agree. Yes. I would say so. We can't. Okay. You can't. Oh. There's nothing to give them a provision. Okay. So, and, and, um, Jamie brought that up as well yep. about the money. So, how, I guess, is there a way to give some of it or how does that work? The board, I suppose, could decide, but that's a board decision, not this body's. We could send something, parts of it back, I guess. Elevation. Well, I think I, I think we're comfortable with the elevations, right? So we could make we could make an emo we could make a motion to approve the elevations as they are and defer action on the landscaping for a month, and then it's gonna it would have to go to the board next week, I think, for the board to make a decision on how the TIF funding would get handled. And we can give them an update of what happened tonight, and it's their purview to make a decision. Might have to be what. Percentage is completed then if the correct elevations are approved versus landscaping. Yeah, are we approving it or are we making recommendation to the board? Well, we would. You're making a recommendation, recommendation to the board. To the yes. So Jamie, correct. Also, we're not approved. Also, Jamie, what you probably want to do is just keep the fact of what the cost of living would be for landscaping. So there's a, it, it's, it's a group of, but I say it's just $30,000. Sure. You're not going to get it. Sure. And they could have had the agreement because there's another building. How much money has to be spent 
to be able mm-hmm. to support the company yeah. where we're yeah. supposed to. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So we can't say 30,000. I'm just, I just said I just use it. No, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah I, I, I get what you were saying. So maybe, so maybe you should give us how many points they have to gain and what it's going to take to gain those points. Then we can make a decision. Well, I think we would defer the landscaping plan for a month so that yeah, we can get our. Still, yep. still, if he come back with the number, say, okay, they got to gain 1,000 points, and for 1,000 points, they need that kind of that kind of plan. Then the landscape guy have a good idea what to come back to us. Well, they need like 3,000 points. It's quite a few. Well, uh, this is one of the those whole point system that you had done with you, I believe, Jen, is the whole property. And we don't even have a second building on it. And that's coming yet. So what right. we have up right now, I'm not sure how you guys have your point system figure out what we have already compared to what we still need to do in the future. Those 4,000 points or so that Travis mentioned, I think is for the whole property. It is. So the way okay. the approvals went, you approved the whole site so that you basically didn't have to come back in for building number two. Correct. So, like when I don't remember if you or Jeff asked, you know, at one point that one wasn't even, you weren't even open with the two businesses and you were asking about, you know, a building permit for, for the next building. So, basically, when we did this project, they approved the whole site as a whole. So there may be some that would get tied to that second building. It's probably not a whole lot. It's probably the building foundation part. Yeah, because really the only thing that isn't done on the site is the building pad and the portion between the building pad and the fence on the north property line. Okay. Otherwise, all the, the parking pretty much is in. So it's just yeah, you have the, the, the building side. pad over to Birch. Because the driveway to Birch is in. This was the original landscape plan. So what's your pleasure? How do we want to move this forward? Can I ask it? Can I ask it? You guys, are, and I'm sorry to interrupt. You. I just the building looks great, right? If we can figure out the landscaping and figure out how much hardscape area you guys have done, that all costs money. We realize that, and it, it, you're right; it will last a lot longer. Uh, the question is: is you you guys know you guys made the decision to save the cost on not putting the building exactly the way it was submitted, right? So that was a cost savings. You might have put more money in landscaping, but you didn't meet the points. So, do you want do you want the cost of putting the building back to where it should have been, or do you want to try to put the cost of landscaping back to where it needs to be? Well, we like to add some landscaping up for you guys. The building, I think, is beautiful the way it is too, and the way it looks and structurally and everything looks really nice. We're willing to add some landscaping. I guess we just. Don't necessarily want to interrupt or take away from what we've added so far. So, your suggestion is to plant more bushes or another tree or two. But can we? I mean, it's it's more than a tree or two, but it's um, a lot. If you look at your site plan, yeah, we've got five trees out there right now, and I think five is in the for about the plan. Yeah. Well, so the right. existing trees out along the front yeah. were village trees. It's a lot of times we exempt. Those and don't require um, additional ones, but they have quite a bit. If you look at at it, there's quite a bit of room there for the road right of way between where the property line starts and where their parking lot is. So they could add a few trees in there, um, which you would bring the point down. Yeah. And then you've got overhead water right above the too. So if you look at down the line, it's mm-hmm. still right, they've got their trees going right into the wires right where we would plant trees. It's like on the way to property line. This is a tree. We can put that high. Bushes, you know, something like that. They Bush usually do plants. decorative shorter ones, but that's all things that, I mean, 
could have been asked for or suggested in the landscape plan when it was presented. Okay, well, it sounds like we got to get, um, I'm just going to push this down the line and, and try to figure out something with the hardscapes. And then from there, we're going to have to figure out how to get to whatever level we need to get. Right? I would agree. So, I didn't hear about the tip right or what was we talking about, like, is it partial it up? So we, I guess we can't make that decision as the plan commission. That's going to have to, because all the TIF funds are awarded by the board. So the, our recommendation as to where we're at now at the building elevations, I guess would, would that go back to, that would go back to the board Monday. Mm -hmm. And then it would be up to the board to decide whether or not we can award a percentage of that. I would, as you alluded to, I would imagine that until we can get the landscaping figured out that there's going to be a portion of that, that's probably going to have to be withheld but i i can't speak because i for everyone because there's seven people on the board but i would imagine that there might be some room, some wiggle room to to work with you one way or the other but we won't know until next monday and i'm assuming what uh will happen is probably somebody's going to put some kind of bunch together that's going to pay for things you want to compliance and if it's thirty thousand or forty thousand that's probably what's going to pull back uh, oh okay yeah you know what I mean? You yeah. might get your. I did hear a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, you, you might get seventy thousand of your money until yeah. I, again until somebody figures out. First of all, we got to figure out what hardscape it and what the points are going to be, and then how much more you have to put in there. What what that cost mm -hmm. would be, and then you. But you know that's going to be a guesstimate now. If you're talking about trying to get us some money in the near future before a month from now, before we have hardscapes put in, right? Yeah. I think you still should give them the number of how many points they need to gain so that the architect knows. We're going to revise the code. How do you know what that number is? I don't know what, I mean, I don't even know if we're going to have that number tonight because no, we're, 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 we have it on the agenda point. here, but we have to do some research and but figure out. I don't know what to come back to us to make up those numbers. How do they know to do that? They're not going to know until we have It may a take a month or two to, to get that yeah. number. Yeah, you guys so. will still have to talk about it next month. Whatever gets changed has to go to public hearing. So it may take us a month to put something together that you guys can react off of. It might not be ready. I don't know. We, we'll have to look into it. I don't know what to tell you right now. Is that burdening anything on your closing or anything or bank stuff? or? No, no. I mean, I, I see. It's not going to be nice, but yeah. But otherwise, so can we just make a recommendation for us to go back? So I I don't think that. So they they would probably have to yeah. amend the agreement. So there's a an agreement out there that every that was signed between the board and Jeff and his company. Um, so I think the way that it was presented and the way the board thought it was going to go was that m most everything was going to be done with building one because that was kind of a sure thing and building two that's why they gave less the, the so maybe they can and i don't know jamie we'll have to talk about it more tomorrow but maybe they can amend the agreement to push more of it to building two because we're also going to get into this point where are they going to be able to put the landscaping in right away also yeah and you're going to hit winter and then, yeah yeah so yeah. So at least then maybe they can get something with us because it might take longer. Yeah. To sort out. And and where I was asking that question was, is if this takes three four months and you and you're waiting till next year to get the rest of your tip money. Yeah. It might no. be just as easy to get the points in. That's that's where I was right. why I asked right. those questions. Right. Yeah. That's why I just asked. If you were waiting or holding, if that money's holding you up, because if you have to wait six or eight months or until building two goes in to get the rest of your money, you might as well just put your, put your, get your points. I think, I think as far as this commission is concerned, I think everybody, your building looks great. The landscaping looks great. We're just between a rock and a hard place because we can't, it's hard to do this for one, for one individual after the fact and then have and because then what happens everybody who builds a building here is coming in doing the same thing we're, and we're not asking for that we're i mean 
I would actually apologize to you guys for taking up this time and making the mistake of not following the exact plan. But like I said, once we started to find it, it looks so much better. I turned out great, you know, and that's that's my fault, and then it made it better than what the picture showed. I, th I think we're willing to work with you guys to try to make everything correct, but it's it's just going to take some time to get that sorted out. So I hope, to, to Gary's point with the money, I just want to make sure that if it takes some time that it's not going to be a huge strain on on your situation, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, I, we will be nice to get some stuff. Okay. Um, with, with the board propose something to us or we propose to you or how we... Jeff or Jen, I, I think the I board, would think the board would have to propose together. something. Yeah. So, um, Roy, you were going to make a motion. Yeah, um, I'll make a motion to recommend that the board approve site plan elevations as built versus what was in the original development plan, and defer any action on the landscape plan subject to possible code revisions and or changes to the actual landscaping on site. Second. Motion by Mumper, second by Deason. That was very well worded. Yes, very well. Um, on the question. Um, do they have to still meet those points or are they gonna change those points? We're yeah, going to talk about that next. Yep. That's why I gave them the option. It's the next agenda item. Either, either they qualify to the site due to some change in the code or they change the actual. All right. Um, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. You might want to be at that board meeting. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. We'll get it worked out. Uh, item number nine, discussion interaction on future zoning code amendments. Subsection A, Article 11, Landscaping and Preservation Standards. Thank you. Um, so obviously this is a um, critical topic based on the um, project that we just discussed. And just to kind of revisit, I know I know everyone's well informed about this, but I do want to just draw attention to, um, you know, landscaping creates an increase in curb appeal. There's environmental benefits. There's noise reduction, privacy, erosion control. Um, so there's lots of different reasons that we're we're thinking about, you know, buffering sites, adding green space. Um, there's definitely a lot of inherent value in in the landscape environment. Um, so looking at this and other codes and ways that other communities throughout the state have handled this. Um, of course, like the salt was discussed, Wisconsin does have considerations and maybe some other states don't. So it's good to look around our kind of neighboring communities on this. Um, so we do have, what I referenced earlier under applicability, there are some examples that are given, but they're very specific. Um, they, they, they pay attention to things like stormwater or development projects. And things like that, it's not as much for alternative designs and things like that. So there are other codes in the state that do have some of these kinds of provisions. And just kind of grouping them and thinking about Weston, some of the items that we could look at would be exceptions for things like unusual site conditions, scale massing or overall site design. Um, and then I think what example we just saw would fall under, it's highly subjective, um, would be the consideration of landscape architecture approaches such as intentional minimalism, sustainability, integration of functional features or technology, water features or outdoor living spaces. And with, with zoning codes, the, kind of the more subjective we get, it's always harder to provide a review because it's like what someone thinks is a really nice alternative design, and, and it may be great, um, Someone else may be like, I don't see it. You know, I don't see the alternative design. The other thing I want to bring up, and I'm sure I'm sure you've seen many examples of this, is we're we're always going to have those um, examples where people are looking for a workaround, and 
for example, you know, we'll put a bunch of rock down and say, okay, this is my alternative um, site design. So, I, so the the way the beginning proposal would read is the zoning administrator does me and the planning commission shall have the authority to allow these alterations or substitutions because that way there's a basis for some kind of different viewpoints and different opinions versus where maybe staff would be the, always the best to make that determination. Um, and then the other couple were to encourage tree preservation, which we do have allowances for tree preservation, so that may be redundant. Um, and then to encourage Wisconsin Native landscaping, ecosystem restoration, pollinator, or bird habitat. Examples of like sustainability where there's these, um, you know, some of those plantings wouldn't always incur more points, but they may make a really nice design based on what's being proposed. But listening to your conversation, it pertained more to kind of creating more value with that hardscaping. So this may need to have more research if that's more the direction the plant commission would like to go. Right now, there's one line item, it's a certain size boulder, and it's allowed to go up to 200 points. There's nothing allowed for like a square footage of rock or something like that. And again, I'm not sure in that example too, just because you could, you could have a business that's like asphalt parking lot building, bunch of rock, you know, where it's gonna be a lot different looking, for example, than the proposal that we just saw. And so I don't know if, if we would want to look at that, but if that is the direction the commission would want to go, of course, um, you know, as staff, we'd be happy to look at those alternatives and build in whatever you would see as the best options for allowing kind of some alternative ways of looking at landscaping. So I don't know if there's any questions from the commission or, or different direction that you would specifically like us to really look at. Well, I, at least me, I would be curious I, I, what, other, what other municipalities require for their hardscaping? Is it, is it a 200 point minimum? Is it, so, is it more, is it less? So I live in a community and I'm a planning commissioner there and I don't know of any hardscaping allowance at all. Okay. And the community I came from had a very similar, and they have similar points, so we're both, they have similar points. So the community I came from, Wisconsin Rapids, had a very similar point system, very new zoning code, and there was no allowance for hardscaping. This is the only time I've ever seen that, but that's not to say that a lot of other communities may be don't have that, but that's part of the reason I didn't even think of exploring that because this 200 points is the first I've seen that. And it's more boulders that would be substantial where it would add to me like an architectural element versus just like a rock, you know, covering. Because like my thought goes to like, you look at like this, this the far like Southwest, the extreme Southwest part of the United yeah, States, they can't, they can't use water because they have no water. I mean, Okay. It, it's impractical for them to do that. And I'm not saying that we don't have water here, but it also creates more expense, more, I mean, it's more maintenance, it, it's everything. It's a ton of extra work. So, I mean, just because we have the means here to do it, doesn't always necessarily mean we should, maybe it's irresponsible. Give me the point. So, so myself, if, I'm a, if I'm a national chain coming from Arizona or California, you go out there and nobody's got it grass right they've got rocks they, they, they don't you, you just, it, it's just ridiculous to try and even approach it from a landscape standpoint you've got to go out and see it um, and, but, yeah i don't have a problem at all with hardscaping versus landscaping uh, and sustainability wise yeah you can make the argument it's more ecologically sound and i'm not saying it should all be hard so, <clears throat> direction where it's it's a good it's a healthy mixture of both because i i, I do I like think this is Go ahead, Trav. First, Steve. I, I was just going to say, just because, uh, you know, I'm in this process right now uh, with my building, and I had a landscape designer do my plan, um, cost me about 500 bucks to have her do it, and her first plan came back and said, this is what you should do, but this is what you're required to do. So from dealing with her, I would say that, from her, how do I say this, from her perception to me was that the Village of Weston has a very rigorous landscaping code. And I can, I can bring that stuff in on what she suggested we do versus what we had to do. And they were drastically different, far more plants, far more stuff. I agree that landscaping does add a very architectural appeal, aesthetic appeal, 
But in the same sense, if we have too much landscaping where people are just not taking care of it, what's worse, having less that's more or having more that looks terrible? I, I mean, you can look at it two ways. So, I, I mean, having gone through this, that's my opinion. And I, I think we really need to look at it and it needs to be looked at hard compared to other communities to find out where the point system's at. Are we high on points? Are we asking for too much? Or is there a little bit of wiggle room in there to let people go with less and, you know, incorporate more hardscaping in just for a better look in the future? Because like Gary said, I mean, plants die. We don't police that at all. So would we rather have a lesser manicured, nicer looking or more stuff that just gets overgrown and nothing happens with it? Yeah, I I get the I intent. agree. Thanks, Trev. And, and I agree. I get the intention of trying to make it look nicer. It's just uh, it, it gets very costly if you have to hire a landscaping guy to, to do it and you're watering the stuff. You're, you're having to get it pruned. You're having to, you know, it, it just it gets very costly. But it's a it's a lifetime expense when you start adding all that stuff because you never get ahead of it. You're always in, you know in, in fall you got to cut everything down. Um, the the initial expense of all that stuff. Like, I mean, I can take a picture of the, the back side of my building. I mean, there's literally plants on top of plants in the beds just to get the point system to where it's at. And does it look nice? Yeah, it looks nice now because, you know, all the plants are nicely manicured and all that stuff. If I let that stuff go for three years or it's all overgrown, you know, it's going to look terrible. But, I mean, again, we just I think that this is something that needs to be looked into a little bit more with the hardscape stuff like that because you start looking around at some residential houses hardscape is a huge thing and it's going to become a, a thing in the commercial industry as well so yeah i know i've got a dead one of my front yard that's coming down next year so does that carry does that give you some direction on i think the way that everybody here wants to go it does so i think one aspect is looking at can we reduce points or how do our points stack up to the communities? And then another aspect would be looking at beefing up the hardscape point, kind of value of hardscape and how we can measure that somehow. But but making sure that we don't get ourselves in a situation where I, someone else brought it, where it's asphalt rock building. I don't want that either. But um, so there's got to be some plants in there to break it up. But a healthy mixture. Another example of that is uh, the building that we just approved the docks for or on. Uh, Backward, you know, across the street from Wasso Supply and to the east, mm -hmm. that red building. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, for the warehousing. Yeah, for the warehousing. You know, yeah. we just approved the dock change. Yeah. When you drive by that place, all they did is, is they dumped a bunch of mm -hmm. rock from the building down towards the road so that they didn't have grass to mow. And that has grown up with weeds and junk trees and all sorts of stuff. So, what looked good. For a short period of time with a hardscape has turned into a pretty ugly looking jungle with and, and like I say, you just need to drive by there and see exactly what I'm talking about. Because he's done something. So there's gotta be some with the hardscape, there has to be and, and like there is with landscaping, there should be some provision for some kind of maintenance supervision that the town would have, saying that, you know, I mean, we, we ask people to cut down their weeds, right? Well, when you have hardscaping, you have to be able to ask people to maintain that hardscape so it doesn't get overgrown with weeds and really start looking chunky. I agree. I agree. There is a section of the code already just needs to be enforced. Okay. That that addresses that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. okay. It's number eight maintenance. Okay. And then it's tied to um, the nuisance code. But Jen, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of times those things don't get enforced unless enforced unless someone files a complaint, correct? Is that kind of yes the direction no. that we've been we're headed? Working on our enforcement process right now. So we've got help from um, the police department and we're tackling issues right now as they come up, mm -hmm. but hopefully we can expand on that. Okay. Um, is that good enough? Is that's enough for landscaping? Yes. For tonight? Yep. Okay. So, uh, so then what we will do is bring bring back to the commission next month some specifics in terms of um, recommended ordinance changes regarding laundry. I think that's a good idea. And what the board has to say? Yes. Okay. 
uh, subsection B, section 94.12.08, parent 10, provisions for sidewalks. Uh, so this is a suggestion that I am bringing forward. Um, this came up, I think, with B and D. I think it had to come here. Um, but basically changing so that the site plan approval authority may waive um, the provision for sidewalks because there's it basically falls on Michael to say it doesn't need a sidewalk. So if you guys are okay with the site plan approval authority, it would be helpful for some of these projects, especially like building it. Like that was a large building addition. Um, and for it to just come for you guys to say they don't need sidewalk. Um, I would prefer if we could just put that in there so that if the staff is being the site plan approval authority and Michael is okay with it. Um, doesn't have to come here. That it doesn't have to come to the plan. And if they're, grown, if they're grumbling that they don't want it to or don't feel they can always come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this basically gives us the ability to say if Michael's like, there's not going to be a sidewalk there. A lot of this ends up being more in the industrial park, not necessarily commercial property. Okay, anybody got any questions there? Uh, subsection C, section 94.17.04, definitions, sign alteration. So we just want to bring a definition for sign alteration. <laughs> to you next month if we're going to do any changes. So this is just a definition um, on what a sign alteration means. Because we don't specifically have that in our definition section. There might be a few other ones too that are like different. Like black face came up the other day. Okay. So our plan was yes. to bring you basically these ready for public hearing next month, but we may just wait and do them all when you do the landscaping. Okay. Um, I don't know if I dare bring this up, but as part of the sign, do we want to look at our, I don't know what the rest of the plan commission thinks, but there was a some enforcement that occurred with three businesses um, regarding, uh, what are they, what do you call those? Flag signs? Yeah, they're like, they're the flags. Like right? the ones you put in along the road that advertise something that so we right don't now allow. There's a hot dog one in front of the Western house or dog house. Is that something we want to change or is that something we want to leave as is? Since we're talking about signs. They're not allowed as a temporary sign. So basically, a number of years ago, maybe a few years ago. Uh, we changed the sign ordinance so that it used to have to come in for a temporary sign permit. Now businesses can have just basically like the, the freestanding, like the garage sale sign, like you'll see those, they can have so many per their street frontage. And we don't have a permit for that. They can just use them. We just have to enforce on it if, it, if they're doing too many. Sometimes people will put like 15 of them there. Um, but basically we don't do anything with those, but there are certain signs that are not allowed in communities. They're usually ones that, well, you know, like the little guy who flaps around, the things that can be somewhat annoying and distracting to people driving because they tend to be right out on the side of the road. In the past, those flag signs, it tends to be pretty windy here. They get ratty because people, like we weren't really enforcing it. Like I think at Arrow Sports Bar, they just would take it and put it out at lunchtime. So a lot of them are just using it while they were open. But then you also have the ones who just put it up and leave it forever. So mm -hmm. every once in a while we go and we enforce on them because basically as soon as one person puts them out, then everyone gets them and they go down to the street. So in the past, we've had plant commissioners and board members who hadn't wanted those types of signs. So there's a provision that they're not allowed. I'll tell you what my opinion on it, on it is. In this situation, I think our enforcement works because three businesses had them out, three businesses got a letter, and it was a done deal. It was taken care of. I have no problem if people want to put them out for four or five hours. So we don't for lunch, enforce them unless we see that they're out there all the time. We let people use them for like a grand opening, that kind of stuff when they first opened. It was kind of, for we sure. weren't doing things with that. I was thinking of this, the, the tax. Oh yeah, the tax day your mom with the Yeah, <laughs> clearance sale or something. But yeah. so, so my question is: Does any as part of this, do we want to look at that, or are we comfortable leaving that as is? 
It is working. Why do I want to change? I agree. So you have in that email that I sent mm -hmm. in response, you guys have copies of that, and that's the section that I had highlighted that mm -hmm. is basically what we do. These are the ones that you're trying to get rid of. Those are the ones that we don't allow. So yeah, if they yeah. pop up there, either the guys stop and talk to, to them, or um, I think the new police chief likes to pull signs, so he's mm -hmm. been <laughs> pulling a lot of signs. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we don't we don't typically allow those because these are ones that tend to just you get open. Pull signs if they're in the right. If of they're in the right of way. Yeah, if they're on pri on private property, yeah, no. They don't. But the thing is, is nobody ever puts them. So Put sometimes, them. Close to the road so top. sometimes yeah. during political season, they will actually move them back or will call. That's something that'll come up now here in the next few months is where those signs get put. Okay. Um, so I guess we do have to make a motion on this. There's a, some recommended language for all three of these items. Page 64. Yeah, so they all require a public hearing because they're part of the zoning code. I mean, we as staff are okay just bringing whatever gets three changed. Pub three the... public hearings, or can we do them all under one? So basically what we did the last time is it's one public hearing on changes to the zoning code. So okay. it'll just be one ordinance, and we'll just outline them. And if somebody doesn't like something, it can just be taken off of that. Or pulled and discussed separately for right. separate approval. Yep. This way, there's only one hearing and one ordinance. No, so they'll have to actually approve. We're going to talk a little bit about the DPC um, a little bit later. So we'll jump up, but so we yeah, so they'll have to come back because basically what happens is, like, as you remember, is when we make a code change, they typically do also. So we have to submit a motion for the sign alteration for all three. Just what's, what's right up there? there. Think we're to that point that we're wanting us to do some things with the landscaping. Yeah, I guess as staff, I future planning commission. Yeah, we oh, can bring it all back okay. together. Okay, so do you want? So you want to bring it back here first before we schedule a public hearing? Right. I would think so. Okay. We're going to give you a bunch of different options. I think. That's fine. Because there's. I mean, we want to talk about all the hard yeah. and how many changes. I mean, I would like to see um, Travis's what he has from his. To understand mm -hmm. that a little bit more from the lady he worked with, because that, at one point I think I worked with Susie Murphy. I was going to say, was that Susie that you worked with, Travis? It's um, I, Jen. I'll send that to you tomorrow. It's Barb. She's out of Merrill, I believe. Uh, Turf MDs is the yeah. one that recommended yeah, me to her. I, uh, I sat down with Susie Murphy. We've made changes, so this is scaled back. So I'm also going to talk to Mark a little bit. Um, to see if he knows of anybody that has any hardscaping, if they've done any of that down. Yeah, to see if he knows of anything like that, and we can kind of scour some codes and maybe even put something out on our planning site. Do you even need a motion then? Can no. Just, okay, no, I, we're good. I think we're okay. okay. Super don't want to rush everyone, but we need to set up the room for the election tomorrow too. Okay, moving on. Um, Item number 10, discussion and interaction on a timeline for a full comprehensive plan update. Uh, so even though we still have to bring something forward, <laughs> that's been kind of hanging out there. Um, we did adopt the last comprehensive plan in 2016. So we are looking at having to do a full update. And lots of things have changed. Lots of project ideas have changed since the 2015 plan. So Jamie and I and Carrie have um, talked to Mark Crawford a little bit about it and what that could look like to help us with future budgeting and just project load on the Planning Commission and the board. Um, because the Planning Commission is the primary, you have the primary responsibility to kind of lead the charge on this. So we're talking about dividing it into a, a two year project. So basically, the way that the 
the conference plan is set up right now, we have basically three different volumes. The first volume is the conditions and issues, and then the second volume is the visions and directions, so that's where the implementation is. Um, and the third volume is kind of all those extra plans. So we've adopted the quarter plans and things like that. There's the broadband plan. There's just kind of those outside the covers of plan, things that we've wanted to, to, to make a little stronger. Um, and they've been approved as part of the covers of plan. So we are looking to basically work on the conditions and issues um, next year and kind of start the public participation process um, in 2025. So this will kind of help with budgeting also since we do a two year budget. So we just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit with you guys and see what your thoughts are. Um, I think we kind of did that the last time too. Um, but we were also doing a full zoning code update at the same time. So that was kind of, it became a lot longer process because I think we started in 2013. Um, with the zoning code and got adopted in 15. Um, and then we were working on the different elements of the conference's plan. So just kind of bringing it to your attention that this is going to start up. So there's four questions here. What type of update process would the commission like to see? Um, I would like to, I mean, you mentioned in here a full update. I think uh, the village has changed drastically since 2016, so I would agree that a full update would probably be. Yeah, because there's not a whole lot of like guidance on you have to do a full update, but I think in talking, there's been a lot of different ideas. We've gone through COVID. Um, the original plan has the sports complex that doesn't exist anymore. It's now been situated into a different location, more mm -hmm. or less, on a smaller scale. So. Um, I think it's a good time to kind of take a new look at everything. And you want to do two parts? I think just for Easy. process, yeah, meeting <laughs> time, sanity. Yep, um, I have no attention dollars. span, so I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot of the front part is just going to be census data and things like that. Um, but you know, we're talking about a survey, you guys will be involved in that, maybe some. We'll look at some different avenues on how to get public participation because we had a hard time the last time getting people that tended to just be the planning commission and board and, and staff interacting. I think we had one person that came and he ended up as a planning commissioner eventually. Um, but who was it? No, it's not here anymore. <laughs> do, you, do we want public participation? Or yeah, anything? there I, is a public participation okay. element okay. that's yeah, required. I, I think it's just hard to get it. You, you can't get it. Yeah. Unless you, so let's do send surveys, even when it's the last survey that gets it doesn't get a lot of We actually got quite a few. So yeah, we can we can do that again. We have the one. Um, we can do a digital and then we offered it if someone wanted to come in and pick it up. Okay. Um, I, I think we did have a good response. I think surveys are gonna be the best way to do that. Yeah, we don't get a lot of people to the meeting. They want to react up to something. Even I think when we adopted it, I had a room full of people and they didn't say a single thing. Well, word. a lot of people yeah. are attending. Right. There you are. Well, I think the, yeah, you're right. I mean, they are. There are some facilitation, like we can get people to come in and do some. There's different ways to do things where yeah. there's people like, there's maps and you can kind of, we, you have to have the people that like to brainstorm. Did we, did we go out one? We was, but we were at Dale's. We well, yeah, we went to the parks. We had meetings at all the different parks around the community, different nights, and people could come and uh, it was like that a was meeting the, in the park. That was where the they two, didn't feel so. Yeah, that was the 2006. So when I first got I to think the we did village, one in 88 too. we <laughs> I wasn't here for that. <laughs> but there were like neighborhood meetings out yeah, in the different in the parks, yeah, parks they um, meetings. and they had, and that was a lot, yeah, Dean went, he kind of told what was going on, I think Keith would talk about road projects, um, and it would just give people an ability think, to talk, a lot they, of it was nuisance stuff, they, <laughs> my part. They passed out a little survey to inform to fill out, so that yeah. they, they didn't have to say anything, but we got it, and we got it in our hands right away. Yeah, there's different ways to do it. I it think is, the city, I'm not saying that's what we should do. I'm just saying that. They've got a company coming. 
I remember it was pretty well. Any, and you want to use Rothers again? Um, well, I, I personally think he's going to be cheaper just because he knows, he knows us. Sure. And there's that history. So, um, and it'll be in the same format. It'll be easier on staff that way too, because I'm, you know, basically, if we went with someone brand new, Carrie and I would have, you guys would probably be involved in more meetings. Um, yeah. But that's really up to the, <laughs> to the playing commission. So I, the question I have, what I don't understand, like, and excuse my arrogance, maybe I'm just dumb, but um, what is, I don't understand how a boundary agreement works with, with the town. How does that, how does that work? What does that entail? So there's a couple different ways to do it. In talking to, so I went last week to a meeting with Milt and um, Shane Vanderwall, who's the town attorney. And so for, and Dave will probably remember, um, back when I first got here, they were always talking about the time that the town and village became whole again. And in everybody's mindset, like even talking to Shane, he thought five, 10 years. Well, we're almost to 30 years. And so some of these, like the green tree annexation, they mentioned, well, you should really have a boundary agreement because basically you don't have to go through some of that same, those processes that people have to go through with the state to basically annex into the village. But the way that the, when Shane talked to the DOA, they're basically recommending that because the relationship right now is good between the board and the town board, that we should look at starting to talk about that time when everyone comes in. So we were always thinking that that area in the home suite home addition would probably go to Wausau, but they don't want that at all. They want it all to come in together. Where is it? To us, not to Wausau. Not to Wausau. Where is that? So that is up around Greenwood Hills. So oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So like that goes, there's a strip. Black. So there's a yeah. period Is that the of, road that goes into Greenwood Hills? There's part of Greenwood no. Hills on the one side is in the town yet. Yeah. Okay. So where um, they just had a rezone for a home. This was just to the. Can you bring up a map? Jen, some of it became we annexed the city of Wasa. Some of it became all the way past Northwestern. Yeah. Down to the river. Right. Yeah. So I don't know how it's going to go, and not all the town board is probably on board for it. There's a milt pretty much the. The only one left that remembers all that stuff, and Milt doesn't want to be the town chair forever either. So some of it is they're talking about we need to to figure this out. I would Just agree because before all of a sudden it's too late. Before it's too late, before something happens where there's a falling out. I mean, staff members, board members, town board members who aren't who haven't been here, the history's gone. Um, there's already a few that. You know, we do pretty much all their zoning and planning. Um, there's a whole separate zoning ordinance that sits out there that we haven't updated it since 2019. And that's kind of what started the talks is that there, it's a lot harder to update because it has to go through the county and all that kind of stuff. But there's really only a small portion that's left in the town. There's a little bit over there. And then there's actually a tiny bit up in the northeastern corner off of J and um, town line, so our, that we don't go out far enough. So those discussions may be starting. Okay, I think it's a good idea. I like what Mark has done, and to have some consistency in that relationship, I think is important. Okay. Well, um, we need. I guess we do need to make a motion on this. I guess it would probably be more or less a recommendation because we're we're basically going to be taking a budget that's going to include this. Yeah, you'll have to have a new agreement with Mark probably yeah. for it. So I, I think it would be a recommendation to the board to approve an agreement with with MD Roffers. Yep, for a, for a two year. 
yeah, comp it has plan to update. Be budgeted for in 25 inches. What's your pleasure? I can support that recommendation. I don't need to say it. So, yeah, so I guess I would make a motion to recommend the budget for the to the board that they uh, hire MD Rockers for a two year uh, planning process uh, with the idea of uh, bringing forth the, um, the update on the, uh, the definition of the plan. What is it? Comprehensive, Comprehensive plan. And, and to explore the, the addition of, About of merging the, the village and the town. And Sorry. we typically. Um, so work with the town because they have to do a plan basically their comprehensive plan at the same time so we tend to work together with them on that so so we have a motion by hoffman seconded by mumber i'm kidding it's by jordan he's got the wrong name to on his desk um, i didn't want to be left on that. <laughs> uh on the question hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed aye well carried. Uh, staff reports. I don't remember how you want to take them all together or individually. It's a pleasure. Motion by Mumper. Second. Second by Deason. On the question. Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Um, miscellaneous item number 14 announcements and commissioner remarks and staff referrals. Show? Nothing. Roy? Dave? Gary? No. Um, all right, next regular meeting date, Monday, September 9th. What? Oh, Travis, do you have anything you'd like to add? Thank you. Hey, uh, the only thing I'd like to say is, you know, I'm just going to share my experience again. My building process, I had questions and I mean, I called staff for questions and um, everybody that I called was very helpful. They guided me down the right direction. And I appreciate that. Um, I mean, because there's there's questions that I had throughout the process. There was things that I wanted to do. Um, and I went back to Jen and asked Jen and, you know, I mean, Roman and Travis, you know, I've asked them and I just want to thank them, uh, for being the knowledge base that they are, because I mean, I called with the questions because I didn't want to get into a predicament where I wasn't doing the right things. I call Roman weekly and ask him questions on stuff that, you know, things that we've got going on. And I mean, Roman's very helpful in the fact that he says, Hey, you can do this. You can do that. And I appreciate that. Uh, you know, from the staff, because having a contact like that and being able to question somebody and getting the right answers, I really appreciate that. So I just want to reach out to you guys and say thank you uh, for that knowledge and sharing that because it definitely helps with, with the process. Thank you, Trav. Uh, next regular meeting date, Monday, September 9th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Um, motion to, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, uh, motion by Gernt, seconded by Deason. On the question, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So carried. We are adjourned, 8.04 p.m. Don't forget to vote tomorrow. Have a good week, guys and girls.